this week, I guess it was on Monday night or whatever I said to Linda, so I'm not quite sure what I'm going to be preaching on yet. And it hit me on Tuesday morning when I was traveling. Was it Tuesday I left? Monday morning. Monday, Monday morning. When I was traveling in terms of what the topic should be. So, judgment is the topic. And for it's to go beyond these four walls. God gives us technology. People get on the internet. I don't know who might be listening to this. Hopefully, there'll be people that are in the dark that need to come to the light. Because it's sad but true. Today, one of the things people really scoff about is there is no such thing as the Great Judgment Day. They don't believe what is written in the Bible. They don't even open up the Bible. They don't think the Bible is the inspired Word of God. I know several people who are non-believers, atheists, if you may, with this type of frame of mind. They think that they're just here for a good time, and that's all it's going to be. Non-believers make fun about the final judgment. But the fact that they scoff about it and make fun about it and so forth does not change the fact that the judgment day is still truly coming. Just because they don't believe does not make them exempt that they're going to stand there before God on judgment day. It's incredible the actual number of people today who ignore the fact that God exists. Just last week, I watched for the second time the movie, God's Not Dead. It's about one college professor who convinced his class that God is dead and that he never existed. However, there was one student who defended his Christian faith and did not buy into his program. The professor refused to believe anything about the things of God. That was until he was given another chance while lying near dead after being hit by a car. God gave him a chance to acknowledge him. And so that he could come out of the darkness and ask for forgiveness. He didn't take him instantly. And there was a minister there to make him aware of that fact. In Matthew 12, 36, it says, But I tell you that every careless word that people speak, they shall give an account for it in the judgment day. We think about all those careless words that we have out there. And I have another one here. John 3, 19. This is the judgment that the light has come into the world. And the men loved the darkness rather than the light, for their deeds were evil. People like darkness because of what it hides. If you think about a lot of the crime and the things that go on, when does it happen? At night. House gets burglarized, crime on the street. At night, they don't think they're being seen. However, God sees all, no matter how dark it is. These people want to continue doing what they're doing, undisturbed in their evil ways. Now, we are all sinners. I'm a sinner. But as believers, we know to confess our sins, to repent, and to respond to God. However, man's love of darkness rather than God, God the light, he shows his love for man-made idols that he worships and serves. 
These are things like money, addictions, big one today with the youth computer games, possessions. These are all idols that we put in front of God. We put before God, we should say. God comes at the bottom of the list. But what we don't realize is to have these things, God should be first and we will be blessed abundantly. A lot of people have a lot of money because of evil, because of crime. There's a lot of rich people in this country today that were not blessed by God with what they have, but paid by Satan for their evil ways. Now light shows up no matter what, every morning. The sun comes up. Christ is the light. Christ exposes those people's deeds. You get the people that are all in dark, dressed in black, and they're all black and pale, because they live for that night. Who knows what is going on with those groups of people? But as soon as that daylight comes up, they're all hiding in their, in their rooms in the darkness. That's when they go to sleep. Unbelievers, evildoers, have no ultimate meaning of life. They have no worthy motivation. They have no real goals. They have a destiny of doom. Everyone who is influenced by evil hates the light. They fear the light because it shows their evil deeds, and they do not want to turn from them. They think keeping in the dark they will be able to avoid the judgment. Now Jesus spoke of the judgment day when he walked among men. And he said, Every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. And that's in Matthew 12, 36. He also said, He that rejects me and receives not my words hath one that judges him. The word that I have spoken, the same shall judge him in the last day. That's from John 12, 48. Jesus spoke of the day of judgment on the last day. He said there are two kinds of words that are important. What we say and what he says. We will be judged by his words and by our words. Bottom line, this means that we need to pay attention to what we say and pay attention to what he says in the Bible. John chapter 5 and verse 30. I can do nothing on my own initiative as I hear I judge, and my judgment is just, because I do not seek my own will, but the will of him who sent me. This is in red letters. These are Jesus' words. And he's saying that he can't do anything on his own initiative, because he is following him, his father. Now we should look to Jesus as our example. He was in unity with the Father even while he was on this earth. The Son did nothing apart from the Father, and this we should consider. His judgment, as everything he does, is the express will of the Father. He died for our sins. He didn't want to do that. But it was the will of the Father. So he will be our spokesperson to the Father. And it will be his judgment that will determine our fate. Now that is not right there. In 2 Peter, chapter 3 and verse 7. But by his word, the present heavens and earth are being reserved for fire. Kept for
for the day of judgment and destruction of ungodly men. Now here it is written in 2 Peter that there is going to be a future destruction of the world by fire. In the Old Testament, you'll remember the story about Noah, how he defended his faith and followed God's direction to build an ark. Because we learn in the story that by God's word, the world was destroyed by a flood. And God said that he would never do that again. The flood is not what we should be worried about. He did that once. It should be an example of what God does to the evil that lurks in the world. So we know that God intervened before, and he will do so again. God has revealed to us in the Bible that the final judgment of the wicked will be by fire, this, as Peter wrote, will be their day of judgment and destruction. After they are cast into the fire, the heavens and the earth will be destroyed by fire. But bear in mind, there will be a new heaven and a new earth that will be created for all of us. That will be granted that eternal life with him in heaven. In Revelation chapter 14 and verse 7. And he said with a loud voice, Fear God, and give him glory, because the hour of his judgment has come. Worship him who made the heaven and the earth and the sea and the springs of water. Now, here in the book of Revelation, we learn that it was the apostle John who was given a vision of the angel carrying a message. The angel announced, Fear God and give Him glory. People of darkness don't fear God. They think they can hide from God. He's saying, Fear God, because the hour of His judgment has come. The message is a message of God's righteousness and judgment. The final judgment is definitely going to be an event sometime in the future. No one knows just when, except for the Father. So we always need to what? Be ready. To be ready. Thank you. One of my sermons. I talk about, are you ready? People look at me like I'm crazy. <laughs> but we need to be ready. The end could be our own death before the end of time. It can happen like that, like a flash. We hear about people, all of a sudden they've dropped over, they're in a tragic accident. Are you ready? When we die, we better be ready for that final judgment day because our entire life has been recorded and it will be reviewed. Think about that. Big giant computer in the sky recording everything. As this as a sermon is recorded and put on the internet, our entire life is being recorded. Everything we do, everything we say, everything we think. But if we're right with the Lord and we repent and ask for forgiveness, that's what we need to do. Because we can't defend ourselves. Jesus will be defending us before God. So don't wait till it's too late. Accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Confess your sins and start a new life. We will all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. If we have not accepted Jesus, when we stand before his judgment seat, he will declare Depart from me, I never knew you. It is he who is to bring every secret thing into judgment. This is it. He will bring every secret thing into judgment. There are people that do things behind closed doors. Those secret sins that they commit. I think nobody sees them. They're recorded. And it will be brought to light.
I read this earlier, it was Matthew 12, 36. But I tell you that every careless word that people speak, they shall give an account for it in that day of judgment. Because everything's recorded, we're going to be accountable for everything. We alone are responsible for all of our actions and works, which will either acquit or condemn us on the day of judgment. I personally believe we're living in a time of ju ju judgment right now. So if you want your name to be in the book of life, accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You can have the peace that comes from knowing you will have eternal life. You must personally accept the invitation to come to the God of salvation. For when you stand before God of judgment, if you haven't accepted the invitation, it will be too late. That's why Billy Graham had that altar call after every one of his evangelistic events to call the people to make it known that they have a chance. I'll close with this particular scripture here. It's 1 Peter Chapter 4 and verse 7, it reads, The end of all things is near, therefore be of sound judgment and sober spirit for the purpose of prayer. The end of all things is near. We don't know when that end is. Be of sound judgment, our own judgment to make uh, the proper decision to have the Holy Spirit be with us and help us to make the right decision. We can judge ourselves, but ultimately we will be judged on Judgment Day for everything that we've done. And as I said, come to Jesus, turn it all over to Him, ask Him for forgiveness, draw closer each and every day so we have the assurance that when we stand before him on judgment day we will have been forgiven for all of our sins and we will have eternal life in heaven.